Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the fourth part of the architectural asset tutorial series. In today's part let's have a look at some basic UVing and creating textures inside of Blender. First off let's set up our working environment properly for easier UV layout process. By the way for those of you who don't know what UV layout process is you can have a look at an article I added into the video description. But in short, we'll be basically transferring our 3D model coordinates onto a 2D plane so that we can add our textures in 2D editors. This step is also necessary for the Substance Painter texturing phase, which we'll have a look at in the next part of the series. Alright now, I have set up my workspace so that on the left I have my 3D viewport and on the right the UV image editor with the UV edit activated. And now we can start laying out our UV regions. There's a lot of ways to create your UVs for different types of models. Generally you'll want to lay out your geometry into as few UV regions as possible without too many seams. Fortunately for this pedestal's main mesh we'll be creating our textures in the Substance Painter and that software is great for creating seamless textures even if you have a great many seams on your models. So that's why we won't be wasting too much time with this rectangular base mesh and UV it the easiest way possible by using smart UV unwrap. First off let's only show our low poly unsculpted meshes that we backed up before starting the sculpting process. Apply all the modifiers and make sure you do it from the top applying the first ones first. If we didn't do this we would be unwrapping the unmodified mesh without the modifiers taking effect, so no subdivisions, no bevels, etc. After you've applied the modifiers, select the main part of the pedestal, go to edit mode by hitting Ctrl, Tab and 6 and select all the faces with A and then hit U. A UV unwrap menu will pop up. Here just choose Smart UV Project, leave everything as it is and hit OK. Congratulations, our first mesh is unwrapped. Basically what happened here is Blender looked at the mesh from six different orthographic sides and based on which face is facing which direction it laid out the whole mesh into separate regions onto a 2D plane. You can see it on the right in the UV edit window. Now this smart UV unwrap doesn't work all the time. It would be too easy indeed if it did. However in my experience if you're making hard surface angular meshes like houses, boxes or architectural assets like these with majority of angles being 90 degrees you can safely use it and in combination with Substance Painter you'll get great seamless textures. So now let's quickly select the smaller pedestal, go to edit mode, select all faces, hit U and Smart Unwrap and this will do just fine. Now onto something more difficult. Here we have our bowl which is not an angular mesh it curves and bulges so we have to be more smart about this. Before we do that however it seems I may have gone overboard with the subdivisions on this one so let's quickly correct that. Going to the modifiers tab find one called decimate and set it to unsubdivide with some even number like 2 or 4. This significantly lowers the number of polygons on our model however it introduces some hard edges. So let's correct that as well by selecting all the faces and set the normals to smooth. In the first part of this tutorial I've added the smooth option into my quick favorites menu. You can however find it here under face shade smooth. And here we go that's much better. Now let's actually UV the mesh and again what we want to do here is to lay out this mesh onto a plane. However, since it has some volume and all sides are connected together, it can't really be laid out. Imagine you have a pack of potato chips, for example, and you want to spread out this pack on your table. The most simple way is to tear its top part and its sides, only then will you be able to spread it as a whole. We want to do something similar here, so for it we need to define where to tear this geometry. In 3D terms the tears are called UV seams and let's define one now. Since our model has two sides, inner and outer, let's create an edge loop here by hitting Ctrl R and once you have it selected go here to UV and mark seam. 
This created our first seam that basically cuts the model's UVs into two halves and will allow to spread the UVs onto a plane. Let's try it out. Select all the faces, hit U and this time unwrap. Now it lays out the UVs into two circles, which seems fine, but we need to be sure that this is indeed a good unwrap. What we want to eliminate is any stretching due to Blender not being able to lay out the UVs properly. Uh, remember the bag of potato chips? It's basically as if we just cut the top side of the bag and one side of it, uh, we would still be unable to lay it out on the table. So let's check if something like that is not happening here. The way Blender is able to show it to us is carefully hidden here. You need to widen your window until you find this play menu where you check stretch and then also area instead of angle. Okay, what do we have here? Uh, generally, whatever is not colored blue is stretched. Now we could have all sorts of colors from green to yellow, orange and even red. Bluish green is possible, but anything above that like bright green or yellow is a no-no. And since we have quite a bit of green here, let's add some more UV seams. All double click select the middle loop here, separating this triangle madness in the middle. Uh, this part won't be visible under the fire, so we don't need to worry about the triangles. And also let's separate this side here. Choose the mark seams and then hit U and unwrap. Activate area stretch again and let's have a look. Mm, still some green here, so let's all double click select this loop here and mark it as a seam as well. Now what happened here, our regions went somehow out of the bounds of our editor and everything is even more green. Uh, that's however due to the fact that the regions laid out unevenly scaled. Let's correct it by going into the UV menu here and select average island scales. And here we go, now we have just some areas where it's light blue, but that's not much of a problem. Let's hit this pack island option here to clean up the mess and lay out the regions so that they don't overlap. Good, now all you need to do is to go to object mode, shift select all your three meshes and go back to the edit mode. Select all the faces with A and then again use average island scale and pack islands to lay out all our mesh parts next to each other. Now the packing algorithm is not really all that powerful in Blender. There definitely is a way to pack these UV regions onto our plane so that there is as few empty spaces between them as possible. But let's not worry too much about it now. If you want to solve this and have Blender pack your regions in a much smarter and efficient way, you can consider getting add-ons like UV Packmaster, which should already be working in Blender 2.8 link is in the description. And with that we have our base model UV'd and ready for export to Substance Painter. Alright now let's have a look at how we can texture our leaf and rose particles directly in Blender. For that let's unhide our source leaf models from which the particle system generates the wreaths. Here they are. Well and since they're just simple polygon planes let's select them all and apply and unwrap on them. By the way, you don't have to rely on just what the packing algorithm gives you. Anytime you can go in and select your UV regions and move them manually. Uh, you know what? We forgot to apply the modifiers to the leaves. In this case, these subdivision modifiers here. Let's lower the sub D number to one and hit apply on each of the leaves. Then select them all again and hit unwrap. Let's not forget to average the island scales and then hit the packing option. To create our first texture, we will be using Photoshop or any other application where you can manipulate photos. Now we want to take this UV layout that we generated and export it into an image that we can use in Photoshop. To do that with the leaves and their UV selected, let's hit UV and export UV layout. Define where you want the UV layout to be exported, name it and hit export. Ok, let's jump into Photoshop. Here I already have my leaf texture prepared and also my UVs are here. So let's open both of these. 
Now what we want to do is to get these separate leaves onto the UV regions of the three leaves that we exported from Blender. Which means basically just hit L to activate the lasso tool, cut out this leaf here, Ctrl C and switch to our UV region image. Here hit Ctrl V, uh, don't worry if it's slightly smaller than the UV, just scale it up. To activate this transform cage, just hit Ctrl T with your layer selected and then position it on its place, which in our case is right here. Very well, now just hit W to activate the magic wand, select the white space around your leaf and hit delete. Repeat the same process with the other leaf, so lasso select, Ctrl C, Ctrl V and position the leaf on its spot. However, now we can see that it doesn't really fit. Don't panic, we have ways to improve this. Hit Ctrl T, right click on the leaf and activate the mesh warp tool. Now just grab this area here and slide it slightly to the left so that it conforms into the UV region. You can also use these handles on corner points to rotate the edges. Good, with that done, copy paste the third leaf, let's stretch it out a bit and position roughly into the third UV region. Now you can hide the UV layer and let's have a look at the leaves. The left one has too many shiny spots for my taste, so let's hit Ctrl M to activate curves menu, bring down the light parts and also let's add a point here and create a slight curve like this. Perfect. With that we can start exporting our texture. First though let's create an alpha map so that we can define the transparent regions of the leaves later in Blender. Hold down Ctrl and Shift and click on all three thumbnails down here so that all your leaves are selected. You will know that they are selected by this animated dashed line around it. Now hit Ctrl Shift C which copies all your leaves. Here switch to the channels menu and create a new layer here which will create an alpha channel or rather a visibility channel for your document. Hit Ctrl V and the leaves will be pasted into it. Now all that's left to do is use Ctrl M to activate the curves menu and bring up the center like this so that we have either white or black areas, nothing in between, no gray parts. Save your image with Ctrl Shift S, you can use JPEG or rather PNG, then go back to the layers menu and also save your leaf texture. Very good, let's add the textures onto our leaves. Switch to the shader menu and with this plus button add a new shader. Name it something like leaf matte and then switch this window here so that instead of UV image editor we have a shader editor here. You can already see that we have our principled BSDF shader plugged into the surface of our mesh. Now to add our textures hit shift A, choose search and type in image. This will give you the image texture node. Click on open and find your image in the search dialog. With the image plugged in into the node, all that's left is to plug the node into the base color socket of your shader. Grab this little circle here and bring it onto the base color circle right here. With that we add the texture onto our model and now let's also quickly add the transparency information. That is a little bit more complicated since principled BSDF shader, the default shader for Blender 2.8 doesn't really have a default transparency socket. So we need to mix it with another shader. Hit Shift A, search and type in transparency and then add this into our scene. One small tip, you can get rid of this sidebar here by hitting N. After that, add one more node, this one called Mix Shader and put it right above this line. It will be automatically plugged in. What this does is basically mixing two different shaders so that both have 50% opacity or visibility. In our case, this would mean that the principal shader with the leaf texture would mix at 50% with the transparency shader, which would make the whole thing 50% transparent, which we don't want. What we want to achieve is that some areas of the mesh are completely visible and some completely transparent based on the alpha texture we exported from Photoshop. See that socket here, the one with FAC or short for factor? That one coincidentally does just what we need. So just bring in another image texture, use the alpha texture for it and plug it into the factor socket.
And before we render the thing, let's do one more thing. And that is just to define our roughness channel. Basically, if you do not have some already generated roughness texture, you can just take the base color texture, hit shift D and bring the node down here. Then just switch this option to non-color data so that the system only takes black and white values into consideration and then plug the texture into roughness. What the roughness does is it takes whatever is light on our image and makes it completely rough so that it doesn't glint. And whatever is dark is not rough at all so that it's shiny. And since our leaf is supposed to be shiny on the spots where it's the lightest, we actually have to invert this option. So just hit shift A, find invert node and plug it in behind the roughness image texture. Okay, cool. With the base color, transparency, as well as roughness defined, we are ready for our test render. Let's just hit this icon here to activate the preview render. And we have a little problem. We haven't applied the leaf shader to our two other leaves. So let's just shift select them, then shift select the third one already with the texture and hit control L. This allows us to quickly share different materials between multiple objects. Basically the last one selected gives its properties to the previously selected objects. And with that, we can have a look at how our finished leaves look on the model. Just add a sunlight and yeah, this looks good. In the very same way as the leaf particles, I textured my rose petals. The only difference is that there is more leaves. So I selected all three of my rose flowers, switched to the edit mode and with all the faces selected, laid out the UV regions with unwrap. These were actually already unwrapped from the time when we created them. So if yours aren't, you can have a look at the second part of the tutorial. And if anything is unclear, just have a look again at how I unwrapped and laid out the leaves using average island scales and peg islands. With that, I exported my UV layout into Photoshop and using these images from cgtextures.com, I copied and pasted them onto the UV regions, repositioned, squashed and stretched them and also used some warp for them to fit. Everything we did with the leaves only in greater number. And that was it. I exported my base color texture and the transparency channel. Uh, if by the way you encounter an error after plugging in your transparency shader when basically everything disappears except the parts that should be invisible, be sure to just switch the order in which you plugged in these sockets. Put your transparency shader first and your principal BSDF into the second socket. In the end, I also decided to play around a bit with the color of the roses. So I added a hue saturation node and plugged it after my base color image node. You can then add different values here, adding also more saturation like 1.2 and brightening the petals by changing the value to 1.2 as well. With the hue value set to 0.42, I was finally happy with the rose flowers. And with that, we have finished the fourth part of this tutorial series. I hope you enjoyed these videos so far, and I'm hoping you'll tune in next time when we'll finally switch into Substance Painter and create some textures for the pedestal here. And as always, if you like this video, just hit that subscribe button, like it, comment or share. And even if you didn't like it, write me a comment. I'll be happy to hear from you. Until next time, Martin out.